Welcome to Electro Online. In our next example, we're going to draw a single card from a deck, and we have three events. Event A is that we draw a face card. Event B is that we draw a red card. Event C is that we draw a heart. Are these independent or dependent events? What if we take two at a time? For example, A and B, A and C, and B and C, are those considered dependent or independent events? Well, we'll find out in just a moment. We're going to find out what the probabilities are of each of the three events. Then we're going to find out the probability of A and B, A and C, and B and C, and the probability, the conditional probability of one event given that the other one has occurred. It might be easier to start with these instead of those if we do find that they may be dependent events because if they're dependent events we cannot just multiply the probability of each of the two events. Well first of all the probability of pulling a face card. Now there's three face cards for every type that means three times four which is 12 face cards out of a total of 52 cards so when we divide by four we get three out of 13. How about a red card? Now half the cards are red, half the cards are black, so that gives us one half. And then the probability that we'll pull a heart, well one out of every four cards is a heart. So those are the three probabilities. Now what is the probability that we have both a face card and a red card? Does it matter if we pull a card and we find out it's red? No, because that does not affect the probability of pulling a face card. It will be the same ratio, so therefore A and B don't seem to affect one another, so therefore we can say that the probability of A times the probability of B equals the probability of A and B, so this would be equal to 3 over 13 times 1 over 2, which is equal to 3 out of 26. How about the probability of A and C? Well, let's say that we know we pulled out a hard card, but we don't know what, what type. Was it a number or a face card? So therefore, again, they don't seem to be uh, dependent on one another. So that means that we can say that this is equal to the probability of A times the probability of C, which is equal to the probability of A, which is uh, 3 out of 13, the probability of C, which is 1 out of 4. So that would be equal to 3 out of 52. Again, later on, we'll confirm if we're correct there. How about the probability of B and C? Well, if we pull out a heart, then we know that it's a red card. So that means pulling out C and determining what C is, or at least finding out what C is equal to, then we know we affect the outcome of B, so they look like they're dependent on one another. So I would say independent for these two, independent for those two, and dependent for these two, that's my early guess. So I'm not going to figure out yet what B and C is, the probability of B and C, because I know it's not going to be the product. All right, how about the probability of A occurring given that B has occurred? Well, since A and B appear to be independent events, it doesn't matter. That should equal the probability of A, and so therefore that is simply equal to 3 out of 13. So it doesn't matter if we know that we pull the red card, the ratio of getting a face card to another card is going to be still the same. How about A and C? Again, since we pulled out a heart, it doesn't matter. The face card will still be at the same probability, so that will be probability of A, which is still equal to 3 out of 13. No effect there. Now the third one here, notice that we're, finding, we're trying to find the probability that B will occur given that C has already occurred. Now the probability of B is that the probability that we draw a red card. But hearts are a red card, which means that once I know I pulled a red card, uh, a heart, I know I pulled a right, uh, red card, so therefore this must equal 1. Now that we have determined that the probability that B will occur given that C has occurred is equal to 1, we can now figure out the probability of B and C because that is equal to the probability that B will occur given that C has occurred times the probability of C. So that means that this is equal to 1 times the probability of C which is 1 quarter which is equal to 1 over 4. So that means that the, probab the probability that B and C will occur is equal to 
one out of four. And that is how it's done.